Hello, I hope you are doing great. Today we are going to see a small example of how to authenticate your Swagger or Open API pages, your Swagger UI or Open API pages in your Blazor Web Assembly applications. Okay, so if you already have configured Swagger in your application, you will need to do a couple of additional steps, right? Now, before I continue, please remember, subscribe to the channel and share the channel so we can get more subscribers to visit. Also, like the videos and share them so we can get more views too. Comment in the video anything you would like to learn about .NET, Azure and Unity. Okay, so let's start. You should be able to see my computer already and you see that currently I have it divided in or split it in two sections, right? The top section is the configured services method or part of it and the bottom section is part of the configured method, right? The configured services, of course, is the method where we usually configure our services, add dependency injection, and all of that. And the configure is basically where we start configure our application or the interaction between the different um, steps in the flow of the application. Okay, so you will see that in here I ha I am enable Swagger base on a flag that is defined in the configuration file, right? So it is true. If it is true, I'll enable Swagger. Otherwise, I will not. Just as a measure to not having enabled in production, but in case that we need it, be able to go modify the configuration and have it enabled in production if we need it, right? Okay, so you will see that in here I have a couple of additional uh, or a couple of variables that I am retrieving, right? I am retrieving the instance for that Active Directory Business to Consumer. I am retrieving the domain. I am retrieving the client application, client ID, right? And the client application default scopes. This are the ones that you will configure in your client application, in your Blazor WebAssembly application uh, that you will have usually in your app settings.json or in development the app settings.development.json inside the www root folder in your Blazor web assembly or in the client project, right? Okay, then we have to add the Swagger generation, right? We do the uh, add Swagger gen, right? We do or invoke the swagger doc to create the document right we put the name or title on there but we do something additional we invoke the ad security definition right and we will um i am going to simplify that okay and we will add the configuration for the bear right and it's going to be of type open api security scheme right and here we have to configure a type of or of flow or authentication it will be right so it's going to be OAuth, right and the flow that it's going to have is an implicit flow right um, let me just clean this so we don't see the gray okay and now the authorization URL it's going to be basically the same authorization URL that it's being used in your client site. This can also be retrieved in your Azure Active Directory uh, portal when you define the flow. If you click run at the top right of the screen, you will see a link that if you click, you will see all of the information for that flow, including the URLs for the token, for the authorization, and the even the scopes.
Okay, so you see that here I add the scope, right? And I didn't want to to get the name from configuration, but you can also get it from configuration in case in case you need to, right? Then one other thing you need to do is add this operation filter, right? And this operation filter is basically what will tell your Swagger um, to which methods he will have to send the token or should be authorized, right? If you see this operation filter is actually a custom class that implements the I operation filter, right? It retrieves a couple of um, variables in there and we get, for example, you see that we get the context, so we get which ones are, which controllers are marked as anonymous, which controllers or methods are marked as anonymous, right? And then we start looking for the ones that are um, Mark as authorized, right? And we add them we add this uh, open API reference, right? We use the same ID that we put in the other side and this is Oh, we assign the dot security, right? So you see it's a new list of open API security requirement. And we add the JWT schema, which is defined in here, and it has this reference with this ID. And all of this is what will cause your um, Swagger UI to send or to configure those to send the, to authenticate and uh, send the API token to your um, endpoints when you call them, right? Okay, so that will do that. Now, the other thing that you will need to do is in your uh, configure method, you will need to, uh, actually you don't need to do it, but it's better to do it. Uh, you can add the out out client ID so it automatically fills and you don't have to be filling it manually every time right the other thing that you you will do is use this allowed additional query string parameters um, you will add this P which is the policy that will be used for authentication right that's the name of your policy in the Azure Active Directory uh, business to consumer. So now if I go and try to run this application uh, <coughs> you will see my my normal application then we will go to the Swagger UI pages we will authenticate right or authorize actually uh, we will get the token and then we will invoke one of our APIs. So if I do here slash swagger, you will see that I am in here, I have access to all of the methods, right? But if I go, for example, to get my role and I hit try out and then execute, I will get a 401 error, which is unauthorized error, right? Now I need to go and authorize. See that it's automatically filled. I select the scopes, I hit authorize. It redirects me to Azure Active Directory Business to Consumer. Now let's see, I try to authenticate. It's authenticated. I hit close, right? Now I am authorized. And you will see that if I execute, I will see actually a different, something different here. Notice that before, I am not executing yet, but notice that the previous execution didn't send the token in here, 
Now if I hit execute already authorized you will see that it adds the authorization the bearer and the actual bearer token that was retrieved. So that's the way in which you can configure Azure Active Directory business to consumer authentication or authorization actually in your Swagger UI. Remember you have to configure both methods the configured services to add the security definition with implicit flow right add the operational filter with a custom class uh, it's going to implement the i operation filter and it's going to set the security uh, for the endpoints right and you also have to do set the actual policy name and if you want you can automatically fill the client ID. Thank you very much. Remember, please share the channel, subscribe to the channel, to the channel, invite more people so we can get more subscribers, and I can making, I can keep making more videos for you. Remember, we do videos about Blazor, .NET, Azure, and Unity. If you have anything you would like to learn about any of those, please let us know, and we will probably record a video for you. Thank you very much and have a great day.